Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to be talking about tumor suppressor in oncogenes. So if you didn't watch my prior uh, videos, I was really talking about uh, cancer as a disease that is caused primarily by uh, genetic mutations that are acquired um, during the life of an organism. So um, in particular, you know, of importance, they are uh, genetic mutations that um, involve tumor suppressor genes or create oncogenes. And tumor suppressor genes tend to be genes that protect um, against uh, disruption of the DNA or significant mutations. And oncogenes are new genes that sort of promote the growth of aberrant cells. Okay, so here we have, this is my rough drawing of a alveolus with our you know, sort of type 1 alveolar cells here and our type 2 alveolar cells here. Now, just to uh, review genetics here, so we're going to sort of focus on the type 2 alveolar cell, which um, interestingly enough is thought to be the cell of origin for adenocarcinomas in lung cancers. So we've got here a happy little type 2 uh, alveolar cell that is because of its genetic code, it is developing proteins that tell the cell to behave just as it should. It has proteins that, tell, that give the cell what's called contact inhibition so that it won't keep dividing um, beyond and producing cells beyond the space that it has available. It also um, has proteins that allow it to produce, you know, it's important, um, it, it's important uh, chemicals like surfactant that it's um, sending out into the alveolus. So right now this is a healthy normal cell. Now this is a person who tends to smoke. So we're bringing smoke down into the alveoli and it is affecting this type 2 cell. What does smoke do? Well smoke is a contains many carcinogens, right? And what do carcinogens do? Well, one of the things they do, we talked um, in, in um, a couple of videos ago, we talked about how there is, you know, we've got a small chance every time we replicate our DNA that, you know, there's like a one in a million or one in 10 million chance that there is going to be an error in the DNA replication. And carcinogens are chemicals that actually damage DNA during, before or during mitosis and increase the error rate. All right, so it's going to increase the chance that we have errors. And it also may interfere with the repair processes. So it may interfere with some of the proteins that help to repair DNA. Okay, so the carcinogens are going to make it more likely that as this type 2 cell re replaces itself through mitosis, um, it is going to have problems, derangements, and mutations in its DNA. Okay, so you know the first few times, you know the first few thousand times that it divides itself, um, you know it may have mutations that are inconsequential. So it may have meaningless ones. But eventually, you know, over time, it may develop some meaningful ones. And in particular, it may develop mutations that decrease the effectiveness of tumor suppressor genes. Okay, or um, we may actually create new oncogenes. And why is this important? Well, let's talk about one of the tumor suppressor genes here to give you a, a clear example. One of the major tumor suppressor genes is called PP53. And this codes for the protein P53. And this is a critical protein that is active in all of our body cells. And what it does is it, it is involved in DNA repair. So anytime that we have a um, mutation or damage to our DNA, it repairs it. Um, it is also able to arrest mitosis if there is significant mutation. So it's a what this is called a cell cycle 
regulator. So it's able to regulate the cycle of mitosis. And it's also able to control apoptosis. So this gene is so important that it's actually been called the guardian of the genome. And interestingly enough, there are some, some studies that suggest that, that up to 50% of all solid tumors have mutations to the TP53 gene in them. So this very well is oftentimes an, one of the early mutations that sets the, that sets the cell up for later mutations. So if you can imagine, inside the cell nucleus, with a healthy cell, we've got a P53 protein that is running around repairing, repairing damaged um, DNA, or if the DNA becomes too damaged, you know, then it actually stops mitosis, or if it's the, you know, very, very severe damage, then it actually will cause apoptosis, right? But if we knock out all of these effects, then what are we going to have? We're going to have the cell reproducing itself with all of, the, all of these damages, damaged parts of DNA intact. So we're going to have a cell that is able to pass on multiple derangements and multiple mutations, allowing mutations to build up generation after generation. Right, so because of this one mutation in TP53 and the damaged P53, the ineffective P53 protein, this sets up the cell and future generations of the cell to build up more and more mutations in future generations. Okay, so this is why it's really important to understand the concept of tumor suppressor genes because it sets up the cell for developing more and more, more mutations. Now, Studies have shown that many cancer cells have as many as 50,000 mutations in one cancer cell. So how does a cell get that many mutations? It's because we have damaged the protective mechanisms. You know, we have early on in the process, we've did damage some of the important protective mechanisms of the cell. And we also have the underlying exposure to carcinogens that's increasing our error rate and decreasing the effectiveness of our DNA repairs. So that's, uh, that's my introduction to tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that work to uh, suppress the genetic mutations that can lead to the development of cancer. And mutations within the tumor suppressor genes will um, oftentimes set the cell up for, uh, for becoming a cancer cell in the future. Now oncogenes are just the opposite of tumor suppression, tumor suppressor genes. They are actually um, new genes that are created sometimes by, um, by fusion of two genes um, that actually create new proteins that, that actually encourage the development of mutations and, uh, and encourage cell growth to promote the development of tumors, okay? So let's give an example of an oncogene. One example of, of an oncogene is that BCRA able um, protein that I had talked about in my prior slide. Remember we have the BCR protein here, or the BCR gene here on, um, on chromosome number nine, and the able protein here on 22 and what happens is um, prior to cell division we have the BCR translocates over to 22 right next to the ABLE protein and we end up with a fusion gene called BCR ABLE and this codes for a brand new tyrosine kinase protein that acts as a cell signal to tell the cell to divide rapidly, right? So it 
causes the cell to increase its growth rate. Okay, so that becomes, this is considered an oncogene because by increasing the growth rate, is it is encouraging the growth of the tumor, okay? Um, now, you know, it's interesting because this kind of severe damage or mutation to the uh, DNA would not be possible in an ordinary cell, right? So this can only occur if there's something already significantly wrong with the DNA of the cell. So maybe there is already damage to the uh, TP53 gene that is the guardian of the g genome or another gene similar to it, one of the other tumor suppressor genes, for instance. Um, so that kind of sets it up for um, for a major mutation like this, and this further sets sets up the uh, the cell to grow and divide more rapidly and, and form itself into a tumor. So let's talk about some specific examples here. So oncogenes tend to be new genes that increase the rate of mitosis. or actually um, stimulate growth factor secretion. Or, um, you know, they can be positive angiogenic factors, right? So one of the issues that happens as a, as a tumor grows is that it needs to increase its blood supply. So in order for a tumor to be successful and to grow in size, it needs to be able to stimulate the growth of new blood vessels to get to the interior of the cell. So, you know, as a tumor grows, it needs to get the, it sort of needs to mutate and develop the power to have um, angiogenic um, growth, fac growth factors involved. So there needs, there may need to be a mutation of something like the VEGF gene that uh, codes for positive uh, growth of blood vessels. So these are some examples of oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. Again, when these are functioning normally, are actually decreasing the rate of mutations or um, cells developing mutations in the body. And examples of these, again, are like the TP53 protein, that is a cell cycle regulator. You know, so it can stop mitosis if there's damage to the DNA. Direct DNA repair or apoptosis, right? So these actually suppress tumors, but if we have significant mutations to them, um, they are no longer effective. Okay, so that's my basic introduction to um, tumor suppressor and oncogenes. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in my next video.